What's up, Internet? <laughs> We're doing Circuit Vlog, part two. Why won't this stay in one place? Stop falling over, please. Circuit Vlog, part two. If you watched the first one, we, we checked out a bunch of different um, uh, integrated circuits for use in um, VCAs. Uh, compared them, compared the data sheets and their, you know, total harmonic distortion levels and stuff like that. Now, basically, I'm going to continue doing that. There's more chips that I'm interested in. Uh, the LM13700 is an OTA, an operational transconductance amplifier that people build VCAs out of. I want to investigate that. The 3080, I have an impression that it's kind of crummy, but after looking at stuff, a lot of really well-respected designs are made with those so perhaps i was wrong uh so we'll look into that um and then probably some prices on these guys too because last time around the that 2181 was the best stats that we could find for these uh integrated circuits however i just did a quick little search and they're like nine dollars a pop uh so they are good, but are they worth that much extra cost per unit? I think there are two VCAs on each of those chips, so if I want to make a four-channel uh, mixer, or even like a two-channel stereo thing, I'm going to need two of those, and then we're already in the double digits for parts cost just on two parts, so that's not great. Um, yeah, so... Here we go. We're going to investigate. Where do we start? All right, so I just spent like, uh, I don't know, 40 minutes looking at stats and uh, just like last time using um, some AI tools to compare data sheets and then, you know, verifying afterwards because... AI is young and full of errors, um, but I learned a lot of stuff. First of all, you can't trust those idiots on the internet. I had multiple people tell me that the SSI 2144 was a great chip to um, design a VCA around, and uh, that's a filter. That's not a VCA, so to the two people that said that, come on. Um, the BA662, also somebody suggested that one, and that costs uh, double digits per pop. I only found two places where I could buy them, and uh, one was $13 per, and the other was $26 per ship, and they're, nobody's making them. They're all obsolete, so that one's right out. Uh, the CEM3379 is a very cool little chip. It's like a stereo mixer with CV over panning and then a very uh, high-end VCA built into it and a filter. All on one. So that's like most of a synthesizer all on one chip, which is pretty cool, but I'm trying to make general purpose VCAs for various projects, so that's not what I want. But somebody somebody do something with that. The CEM3379. Somebody build something. Or just link me like a, a circuit that already uses it. I'd be interested. But, you know, I'm researching other stuff. I'm not going to look for them. So link me in the comments, you know. It's cool. Somebody do something with that. Uh, the other one is the, uh, the CA3080 which in the previous video I showed you, somebody gave me a bunch of those, like nine or 10 of these weird little operational transconductance amplifiers that are in these like metal circular enclosures. Uh, pretty interesting. But uh, the data sheet has loads of information about the thing's performance at different temperatures, but I don't care. I'm not gonna bring my synth into the Arctic or to Texas. Maybe Texas, but the point is that it's got a lot of it's a lot of that kind of stuff, but not a lot of information about like the noise to signal ratio or the slew rate or no, the slew rate slew rate might have been on there I forget, but I, I have notes. <laughs> I'm gonna look at some schematics. 
So I know basically what an OTA version was. It, you need like two or three op amps along. Yeah, we'll say two or three op amps along with the OTA and a decent amount of resistors and stuff. So let's check out some of these ICs. Let's see what's up with the uh, SS whatever 2164, SSM 2164. Let's check it out. All right, so I just pulled this up. This is off of the uh, the SSM2164 data sheet. And uh, boy, it makes it look easy. All you really have to do is put your audio into this input. They get 30K and then uh, a little bit of a sort of filter to ground thing. But you basically just stick your audio in here and your control voltage in there. And then the audio comes out of there. This is crazy easy. I didn't realize it was like the whole damn VCA is on these chips. And there's four of them per chip. Damn. This is very convenient. Um, the only drawback is that you can't... Uh, I mean, you can, but it would be tricky-ish. I don't know how off the top of my head, I should say, <laughs> to, to change the like uh, response characteristic for the CV. If it's linear... I mean, it's just basically going to be stuck at linear until it figures something out. Um, yeah, but I mean, with the ease of this, this is a, probably a good choice for my uh, purposes. Um, I do have a bunch of those OTAs, though. Uh, I don't know. What should I do? All right, so here's the, uh, uh, what is it? The THAT2184 data sheet. Has, this is like the bog standard VCA circuit. And you can see uh, that it's pretty much right on the money for the same thing as the SSM2164. Uh, you got a couple of components coming in. I wonder, I don't know for sure, but I wonder because the cap is here, if this guy doesn't take DC current, if it only accepts AC. Uh, I'd have to check. Um, yeah, but then, you know, power, other stuff. CV goes in there, um, and then we have, this is a little structure to get from current to voltage on the way out, which I, I think I called that a buffer earlier in the last circuit on the uh, SSM thing, but that's, you know, that's doing other stuff. Um, yeah, so those two are really similar, basically the same amount of parts. In fact, I think this uses like one or two fewer resistors, which are so, so what, you know? But um, they're basically equivalent in terms of circuit complexity and almost equivalent in power, or I mean in cost, but this guy has better stats, the uh, 2181. So we'll see if I can source a bunch of them. That would be nice. It's a weird SIP chip. That, they must make a surface mount version. Somebody's had to clone this. I'll find out. All right, so here's an OTA-based VCA by Ray Wilson, who is uh, Music from Outer Space. It's a great website if you're not into it. But, you know, it's from 2010, so it's from a while ago. Um, and this is pretty typical of a um, OTA-based VCA. Uh, you got a bunch of, this is basically a mixer for your CV, and then it gets converted into... Um, from voltage to current, and uh, there's kind of two paths for it to take, and we'll switch so you can go log or linear, which is nice, you know, if we wanted to, we could chop out half of all this garbage to simplify, or even uh, put a little knob there maybe, so you can blend between them. Not sure that would work, but I'm going to try it. I might try it. Yeah, and then, you know, your typical... Uh, OTA. This is the LM13700 that we've been looking at. Uh, these two transistors is a Darlington pair, and that's actually part of the OTA chip. It's not the OTA, but it's on it's on the same chip. It's nice. It's just basically a little buffer. So there's a little bit of voltage loss over that, but you know you got an amplifier right before it, so it's nice and easy to adjust for that. Um, yeah. So this guy probably uses about twice as much surrounding circuitry, but I'm really not concerned with the cost of resistors or whatever. You know, they're, they're fractions of pennies. Um, yeah. 
So I think if I were going to build just like a VCA for VCA general purpose stuff, this is probably a better move. But if I want to go for like a whole series of mixers and stuff, uh, I don't know. I think the SSM thing might be a better choice just because I can keep it real small and just on a corner of a circuit board where there's other stuff going on on that board, you know. Whereas I've actually built this one, and it is kind of a sizable circuit. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so, in conclusion, OTA-based VCA circuits are cheaper, they're a little more complex, a little more flexible, um, and it's difficult to compare their noise stats to the uh, integrated circuit-based ones because those guys, those guys all have like signal to noise ratio listed on their data sheets but it's not as easy to do that with OTAs um, you know because they're much more broader purposed uh, the TH8 the set conclusion number two THAT 2181 is the high end in terms of statistics like uh, on the data sheet and stuff that's it I could not find anything that would beat it. In fact, the only thing that was close was the THAT2180, which is basically just the cheaper version from the same people. So that seems to be, if you want the real high end, that's a good place to go. However, I think there's a bit of diminishing returns, right? Uh, it's, those are like almost $10 a pop, and there's two VCAs on them. And then, Conclusion number three, the SSM 2164 has twice as many VCAs on it. It's got four on them per chip. It's about the same complexity um, as the THAT, as the high-end guy. Um, costs about the same, but again, there are twice as many VCAs on it. Um, yeah, it's got four VCAs on the chip instead of the THAT has two. So I'm thinking that that is our winner, the SSM 2164. Uh, that being said, they don't make those anymore. But there's an SSI 2164, and then I think it's a V2164 that's made by um, Cool Audio, who are like, they're, uh, they're owned by Behringer. But uh, they, make, they make clones of old chips. So, um, yeah, and I can source those. I know where to get them for about $7 a pop. So I think the SSM 2164 is our winner, and we'll go forward with that. I still, I guess I now need to figure out some other stuff to do with the OTAs, <clears throat> with the OTAs that I got. Maybe we'll do some, like, MS-20 style filters or something. Get some cool uh, overdriven filters, maybe. I don't know. That's the problem for another time, though. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the end of this circuit vlog. The SSM 2164 seems to be our winner. But, you know, maybe on the third vlog I'll have changed my mind. We'll find out. Okay, bye.